Hello everyone, so in this video I'd like to create something useful. Um, so we're going to do some location um, calculations. Uh, we're going to figure out how to do locations in Power Apps. We're going to look at how to store locations in Power Apps um, and in data sources as well. Uh, we're going to look at how we can calculate the distance between where we are uh, on our mobile app or laptop to where something is uh, as a latitude and longitude that we've stored and we're also going to try and get the compass bearing between where we are and where that stored thing is in the data source uh, so it's going to be kind of like dude where's my car but without the dude where's my car and the copyright lawsuit um, I'm going to make this some sort of house keys thing but basically we're going to have uh, something to the north, south, east and west of us that we're going to try and find a distance to and the compass bearing to. So without further ado, let's crack on. Okay, so let's build an entity. Um, we're going to use a CDS, my favourite. Um, so we're going to call this uh, House Keys. Um, that hopefully will get around any of the issues with calling things keys because you really don't want to um, refer to the word key in a database because it's got so many meanings for foreign keys, primary keys, key keys, you know, you name it. Um, so we we'll just call it house keys and hope for the best uh, that the word key doesn't um, upset anything. Um, we'll leave primary name just because we're going to, you know, that doesn't really matter uh, in this particular instance. So we'll call this one long, so we'll have a longitude um, and we need a uh, decimal number to store that. And, and here's the bit I always forget, which is the limits for latitude and longitude. I always know that it's 180, negative 180, and 90, negative 90, but I can never remember which one is flaming well which. Um, so I always look at this really useful stack overflow post um, about lat limits on lat longs, and it says latitude is negative 90, and longitude is negative 180. It also tells us about how accurate we um, need to make this in terms of decimal places. So with certain data sources, uh, you can specify how many uh, decimal places you'd like stored and that obviously um, reduces the precision of the number uh, and that can help with uh, the amount of data that's used to store uh, the, uh, the number and thus improve the speed um, with which that data is transferred. And it can also help as well because when we're going to turn around and say that this isn't going to be able to store um, billions worth of, uh, of integers, we're just going to turn around and say it's 90 and 180 plus and negative. Um, so that should further enhance um, whatever memory savings the CDS is going to give us. Um, I believe it's fairly clever, the CDS, so hopefully it's going to make some, um, some memory savings there Right, so negative 190, um, negative 180 for longitude. So we create in longitude first, so we can say negative 180, positive 180, uh, and seven decimal places. Now, seven decimal places is going to give us uh, one centimeter's worth of accuracy. Now, normally, I think probably six would be enough, but in this case, we're going to use seven because I have three kids and they leave stuff everywhere. So they're very um, good at stealing my keys and leaving them. So I'd like them to use this app to let them know where Daddy they've left Daddy's keys. Um, so we shall say seven decimal places um, for long, and we will create lat as well. Um, we'll say that that is going to be a decimal number. We'll say it's negative ninety, positive ninety and seven decimal places. So we're going to get one centimetre's worth of accuracy here, which is pretty damn good. Now, Power Apps is going to use the signals feature to tell us what that lat long is, and it gives us a whole bunch of decimal places. Do you know what? I haven't even counted. Maybe we should do that in this video, um, but it's, it's fairly damn accurate. Um, you can walk around and very quickly see the numbers change. Um, so let's do that. Okay, so now we're in Power Apps. Um, we've brought in our data source, which was uh, house keys that we were looking for. 
and uh, we've got the primary name, the lat and the long and we're going to populate these. Now once these are populated we don't need to display them to the user but for debugging purposes you're probably going to want to see them on the screen somewhere so hide them in a Brian Dang debug panel off to the side and have a button to show them um, for when you're wandering around testing your app. Um, so to get uh, that information into Power Apps, uh, the lat longs, they're already in here, um, it's part of the signals that uh, Power Apps allow you to use from the phone. And the easiest way to, uh, to do it is just to um, go into the default piece of the form and to use location um, dot and then we'll find altitude, latitude, so we match latitude obviously with this one. Uh, and uh, this one, I'm not going to panel, let's say location, I can spell it, dot longitude. And we've got it. There we go. Now, if I wasn't tethered to my uh, home internet on my laptop and it had GPS, I could walk around with you right now and uh, that would update and change um, as we're wandering around, which is fairly cool. So let's, um, let's give it a name because we've got, uh, we've got a primary field there that we need to populate and we also need to make uh, it a new form. Um, so we will have that when we submit the form, say new form um, we'll get some form of um, oh, there we go that's just going to force a force new form upon us so we'll call this sun keys so, there we go. So generated us a Record. Now, we've got some lat long information into Power Apps. What are we going to do with it? So what I'm going to do quickly, I'm just going to go off and I'm going to make some um, random uh, lat long locations of where things are. Um, when you're testing, I would highly recommend um, this next part where we're going to look at maps and we're going to look at compass bearings and distances to things that you create something exact, exactly north of you, something exactly south of you, east of you and west of you so that you know exactly which one's which. You can validate your compass bearings and you can validate the distances so if you set them up um, on a website which we'll get to in a minute um, you'll, you'll be able to know exactly what you're looking at and it'll make testing a lot lot easier. So I've come to movable type scripts .co.uk or movabletype.co.uk it's one of my um, favorite websites for testing this kind of stuff um, basically because you can see all of the calculations that you're going to need um, and you've got this uh, the ability to put the points in here and test um, distance to um, initial bearing which is also referred to as the forward azimuth um, which will be how we're going to use the, com uh, the, the, the compass and bearing. So I'm going to um, go on Google Maps, I'm going to drop a pin to the north of me, south of me, east of me, west of me, uh, come in here, write down some measurements so I can test what I'm going to do, make sure that the calculations that I'm applying are valid. Okay, so we've got a gallery of um, the first uh, record we created, which was some keys, which is uh, my current location, and I created a location to the north, south, west and east of me, uh, just by dropping a pin on Google Maps. I've concatenated the latitude and longitude in the gallery with a um, comma. And the reason why I've done this is when you're testing, it's very easy to hit the play button, copy that piece of text out there and paste it into Google and it will show you that on a map. So that's really super handy um, for when things get complicated. So the first thing we'll do is we'll figure out how to uh, get a map into Power Apps. Now, a lot of people will use the Bing Maps connector. I personally prefer to use uh, the API for um, Bing and for Bing Maps. And the API is nothing to be scared about. It's just a web address. You can have to go and get yourself an API key so you can um, so you can request it. I'm not going to show you what my API key is because it's my key. 
and I don't want you copying it. So I'm going to put that in a um, global variable. Um, so every time you see the uh, global variable Bing um, maps key, uh, that's where you insert your key. So I'm going to go and bring some, um, some code into Power Apps now. I'm um, going to copy and paste it in and then we'll walk through it. Okay, so the easiest place to do this um, is on the gallery. Um, so we can see if everything works. Uh, we're going to take the sample image and I've pasted in my piece of code. So this is my link to, um, to the Google Maps API, which is uh, devvirtualearth.net. Um, it's REST API. Uh, I'm going to pass it the latitude and longitude of this item. Um, by the way, just to say, I've got the experimental features for the CDS turned on, so that's why you're not seeing uh, CR, blah, 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 blah. You're seeing the field names. Um, I've asked Google Maps to return me a map that is size 12, so that goes in, uh, that goes in here. Um, I'm going to say that the width of the map, so sorry, that size 12 is the zoom of the map, my mistake. Map size, which is the physical size of the map in pixels, I'm going to set to the size of the image um, that it's in, in terms of the image control. So um, this image is, uh, is image one, which is the image in our um, in our gallery. Uh, we should rename that, obviously, uh, following uh, Todd Buzinski's and, and Rory's um, wonderful uh, coding guidelines, pick which one you like, but they're both fantastic. Um, and then again, this item lat, this item long, this is going to refer to the pin that we uh, place on the map. So this is a push pin, PP push pin. Um, it, it, this is the place it's going to be, and this is the type of push pin. There's about 128 different push pins um, from planes, trains, and automobiles, and uh, all sorts of weird fandangled things. Uh, it could do with some other ones. Um, hint, hint, uh, Bing Maps. DPI, uh, that's um, how big the text is on the map. So if you're looking at um, road names and things, if you change that from normal to large, you'll get bigger bigger street names, uh, bigger city names and all that kind of stuff uh, to help uh, with, uh, user access. And the, and the key, um, like, like I said, set that as a global variable. Um, there is my Bing Maps key. So there we go, and you can see that we now have um, various dots. They all look pretty much in the same location, but they're not if we zoom in on the map. Um, so I believe if we go up, we zoom in, uh, you can see that they're in slightly different locations. Um, obviously, don't come around my house. Uh, I've got kids, and uh, they will kill you. Um, so let's do something uh, more funky with these. Um, so we know where... Uh, these things are on the map. So now let's calculate the distance to them. So I pasted in a piece of code that gives us the uh, location um, and distance from our location to the location stored, uh, the map pins that I dropped earlier on. And uh, here is this piece of code. Um, you can see it's got a lot of trigonometry in it, um, cosines and sines and all that kind of stuff. Uh, I didn't write any of it. Uh, I pinched it from an Excel workbook. I renamed the bits and pieces inside it to work in Power Apps because when you are doing Power Apps, you need to think Excel. So just remember that. I haven't got any sort of maths qualifications whatsoever. This was as simple as plugging this in from an Excel workbook. I verified that it was correct using the website that I showed you earlier, the movable types, and this is just you know this is how easy it is so i pasted it in i renamed the bits i made sure that it, that it referred to lat one and long one and lat two and long two and i just made sure that i, I put them in right tested them on the website and it worked so there you go i didn't use the uh code from uh, movable types list, i think no that was the compass one this one i did use a uh, code from movable types I will paste this code and make this workbook available to you so you can pinch it and use it for your own ill-gotten gains. Um, this does give the distance in kilometers, but I believe it's just a case of converting that with a simple calculation to miles to make that work. Um, so this is quite literally all you have to do is just paste the code in, rename your fields um, within the code, and it will work. 
Um, so how easy is that? Uh, so let's do some compass things because uh, that would be fun as well. Uh, by the way, when you're walking around, uh, this particular um, this particular calculation uses a location, latitude, location, longitude. So that's going to be live off of whatever device you're on. So I have noticed occasionally when I'm uh, if I'm if I'm uh, on, on Wi-Fi and my phone can't pick up the GPS signal, it doesn't move around. I have to open and start the app for some weird reason. Um, that's only happened once or twice. I'm not 100% sure. Uh, but if you see it not updating, shut the app, open the app, uh, and make sure that your, your your GPS is turned on, and you'll have live um, updating um, distances from uh, where you are to these locations. So that's super simple. So I pasted in some more code, and uh, this code is going to give us the bearing. And again, guess what I did? Found an Excel workbook that gave me the code that worked in Power Apps because remember think Excel and uh, I pasted it in and it worked I in fact pasted it in off of movable types and it didn't work it kept giving me um, some skewed numbers that's why testing this is so important so I don't just look at one lat long because it just so coincidentally when I pasted it in gave me the right number when I looked all the way around it didn't so that was a, an awful coincidence um, this one does work uh, and there is one problem with it, it gives us uh, plus negative um, 180 degrees. The compass in power apps gives us 360 degrees worth of um, data. So we need to convert this to a 360 degree um, integer to make it match the compass bearing or vice versa. Um, so it looks right and all we're going to do um, to, to achieve that is uh, if it is a uh, negative number we're going to uh, flip it um, uh, round a bit um, so that it matches up with the compass in perhaps so I will show you how to do that we're just going to go and grab a piece of code to do it and we're going to paste it in and we'll go through it together <clears throat> so this is what I've done to achieve that so um, you can see here that we've got one uh, 158 as a bearing uh, the compass bearing is zero because my laptop doesn't have a compass on it so you will need to test this on your phone um, however this is how we get it to um, to mirror the power apps compass so if the value of the compass bearing text which is this uh, this calculation that we pasted in over here that just worked because we thought Excel um, is uh, less than zero then we're going to add 360 uh, degrees to it to make it a to make it swing around past uh, 180 degrees and, and give us that positive uh, value that we're looking for um, and if it isn't then just leave it alone so you can see there's a negative um, here which is the slightly northern position that I've uh, managed to get uh, I don't know why I clicked the map slightly wrong from where I'm standing and that gives us a, a value of 317 degrees, um, which is you know, 43 off of 360. Uh, 180, which is right behind us, I managed to get lucky with that one. Um, 90 degrees to the west of us, and uh, just over 90 degrees to the east of us. Um, so this would now work if I was to wander around with my phone and uh, turn my phone around, uh, you'd see the compass um, change now. This is a really important thing to tell you. When you go and test this on your phone, do not go from sitting in front of the laptop to or sitting in front of the screens, wander around with your phone thinking it's gonna work. Because the chances are your phone compass has been decalibrated by sitting in front of the screen. So you need to do the old figure of eight thing in the air to calibrate your compass, otherwise, you're going to think, oh, my numbers are all wrong. Trust me, I have this experience. You don't want to do that. Um, there is also a code that you can type in to your Android phone. I'm not sure if it works on Apple, but a code you can type into your Android phone. I believe it's um, hash uh, 01 hash, and it shows you all of the um, signals off the phone so you can play around with the lat longs and the compass to your heart's content and actually get what the numbers are coming out of your phone. Uh, I think that's right. Uh, you have a little check online. 
Um, it's this little four-digit code you type, it's really super cool. Uh, and you can play with that with all other sorts of uh, weird and wonderful things on your phone when you do that. Um, so that's about it for this. Um, I'm going to say, and I'm going to reiterate this again, think XL. Right? So I'll make all of this code available to you. I'm going to post the app file in here. But if you want to do something with maths in Power Apps, the chances are it's already been done in Excel. Excel is the biggest spreadsheet program in the world. There is bucket loads of great Excel formulas out there online. Go and look at them, fit them into Power Apps. Almost all of the maths functions in Excel are in Power Apps. You just have to change the values um, of what the things are referring to. Do some testing, super important, do some testing, validate your numbers, validate them in an Excel workbook, validate them against an online thing like that movable types. Um, just make sure your numbers are right um, and it is that easy. So don't come at this uh, from a position of thinking, this is super hard, I don't have a maths degree, you know, I've got no computer science background and all the rest of it, I don't have a maths degree. I don't have a computer science background, I just nicked it out of Excel and it works. So you can definitely do the same and you should definitely go and do it. So uh, this has been me again, the Power Apper, um, Power Appster even, um, which I got that completely wrong. So that's all for me, I'm the Power Appster. So that's all for me, Power Appster. Uh, definitely have a go at um, locational data. Um, I like to throw a challenge out to the community. I'm not super at all of this uh, uh, wonderful animated graphics that some of you have been doing. Um, I'm thinking uh, Coin Dog and uh, Mr. Dang. Um, I'd love to have a, a, a moving uh, left and right little game style compass um, to go along with this so that you can plot that on your phone. If anyone wants to do a mashup and have a go at that, um, feel free to use the code. Everyone use the code, you know, just steal whatever you can uh, from this video and any other workbooks you can find out there. Uh, go and do it, go and be excellent and prepare for success.